Hello dear viewers, welcome back to episode 2 of Brain Care series. I'm glad to have you on here. We all know that every brain changes with age, and so does mental functioning. And one of the most feared consequences of aging is mental decline. But scientific research have shown that there are possible ways to maintain and improve your brain functioning. This is achievable if you choose to consciously think about your brain health and learn to take good care of it. Like I said in the last episode, it is time that you start being the pilot of your brain and not just a passenger. Even though our brain is the control system, it still needs constant monitoring and maintenance. In this episode, our engagement will be on how we can improve brain functioning through mental stimulation. Brain is usually stimulated by doing new things. It loves being shaken up a bit. Activities that require mental effort, such as doing math problem, drawing, painting, doing puzzle, taking a new course, reading, stimulates new connections between nerve cells. And in rare cases, activates formation of new cells. These activities makes you be in the moment, unlike doing things that you have repeated over the years. Here are some of the ways to help you stimulate your brain. The first one, breaking a strict routine. Do you have a strict routine? That's great because routine makes you productive and organized. However, there's no harm in shaking it up once in a while. Brain needs challenge, yet routine makes it to go on autopilot mode. It becomes automatic just like a programmed computer. For instance, you wake up at 6 a.m. in the morning, pray for three minutes, go to the bathroom, dress up, take your breakfast, then you leave for work at exactly 7.30 a.m. When you get to work, you have a scheduled routine there. Then at 5, you leave work, you go home, maybe you prepare your supper, watch news, then go back to bed at around 10 p.m. Doing these over years will program your mind such that you won't be using any effort to do these tasks because you are already conditioned to doing them. And most importantly, you won't have that battling self-talk that happens when you try to do something out of your comfort zone. The second thing you can do is to find a new route home. You don't have to be driving. You can change your route even when walking, when using a motorbike or a Uber. It can be tricky when using Matatu because you don't have control. As opposed to using the same route every day, this will give your brain a new pattern of thought, firing your neurons. You'll be alert with the fear of getting lost or missing a bump, especially when you're driving, stimulating your sensory experience, and even your visual senses will be excited because you'll be seeing new things and you'll want to see more. If you want to reap the benefits of this, you need to be alert and be in that particular moment. The third tip is to use your non-dominant hand. This excites your brain. Brain has got two lobes, the right side and the left side. Everything that you do with your right side is controlled by the left lobe of your brain. Everything you do on, on the left side is controlled by the right side of your brain. If you are right-handed, once in a while, try to engage your left hand, especially when doing things that are not serious. You can write using your left hand. You can try to brush using your, your left hand. You can even open the door using your left hand because those are things that you automatically do using your right hand. But the moment you engage your left hand, it will require concentration. Let's practically do this. Get a pen and a paper and use your dominant hand to write your name while with your eyes closed. You can pause to do this. Easy, you don't struggle. Okay, now use your non-dominant hand to write your name on a piece of paper with your eyes closed. How do you find it? Now open your eyes and use the same non-dominant hand to write your name. See? You have to concentrate. 
you have to put all your focus on that pen and paper to write it appropriately. Therefore, do this once in a while to make that inactive part of the brain be more active. The fourth part, which is very exciting, and I saved it for you who is still watching up to now, is to play observation games. Our brain is a very powerful organ with billions of neurons, which makes multiple connections with each other via synapses. It can process 11 million bits of information in just a second. However, our conscious mind can only handle 40 to 50 bits of information in a second. Have you ever wondered why we are often advised to set our goals and have priorities? This is because our brain is able to filter information that is relevant to us. And you'll find that within the 40 to 50 bits of information, the higher percentage is what is within your goals, what is within your priorities. Let me ask you a question. Today while going to work, did you notice anybody wearing a red blouse or a yellow blouse? Hmm. Definitely it was among the filtered information. Somebody once narrated a story in one of the videos I watched, I think a year ago. He mentioned that his daughter had been persistent, requesting him to get her a dog. So this day, on this particular day, they sat down and had a serious conversation about getting a dog. And they came to an agreement that he will get her a dog the following month. On the next day, when he was driving to work, he noticed people having dogs all over and was wondering if these people had their conversation and were here to show him various dogs so that he could have a better choice for uh, his daughter. This definitely was not the case. What happened is, dogs were always there, but his brain processed information about dogs subconsciously. It was not among the conscious information that were processed by his brain. But now that it was his priority to get her daughter a dog, it became among the 40 to 50 bits of information. This has happened to me several times. Way back when I was pregnant, I would notice every pregnant person. Ask me today how many pregnant people I have seen in the, in the past one, one week. Definitely, I can't really... I can't really recall I've seen pregnant people, but because I wasn't curious about that, it was among the information that were processed subconsciously. If your goal is to get a car, you'll realize that you're noticing every car, their prices, their spares, the model, and anything that relates to it. Even when watching a movie, you'll single out information about cars because it is what excites your brain. At that particular point you've already told your brain that this is what you want and that excites it you may get to wonder how thieves spot people with phones in the streets of Nairobi it's because that's their objective that's what they'll notice first another thing that you can do to stimulate your brain is to play games games are very involving you are always thinking about the next move and that excites your brain. You are learning, you are socializing, especially when you are uh, playing with uh, people. So if you can have games, that's okay. Other things that can help you stimulate your brain is through telling stories. You can tell a story and modify it the way you want because you'll be thinking about the next thing that is not automatically there. You can decide to memorize things like phone numbers, stop relying so much on tech, Another exciting thing is looking from a new perspective. For example, if you have this like this bottle on your table, then you turn it upside down and let it be there. Your mind will always be attracted to it. Have your phone upside down and look at things from a different perspective. Yeah, it makes your brain to rethink, to think outside the box. Like what if the world was upside down? It doesn't need to be something so complicated. You can do simple things and over time make them more complicated. You can start with a very simple game, a very simple crossword. Then you get to a technical one that makes you think and rethink. You go to sleep while thinking about a solution. These simple activities are very important for your brain. They make your brain cells to fire up, 
to send that electric signal. And with that, your brain will be well supplied with oxygen, will be well supplied with the nutrients that it needs. Remember the last episode I talked about the nutrients that are very vital for your brain functioning. This is the time the blood flows throughout your brain, your brain becomes well oxygenated. And when you do this regularly, then you'll find that you are losing less brain cells, which is very important because that is what leads to mental decline. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you do better to your brain and your brain will serve you better. <laughs> Let's meet in the next video. Episode 3 of Brain Care Series.